Hello, today we discuss architectural dir, or strange man-made gobbledygook. This is the final installment in this mini-series, and let's start with this guy in Baalbek, Lebanon. So, first off, we have these square holes. One, two, there's some on the back here, and... Before we jump into the holes, I want to discuss the general idea behind it. So, uh, I'm not going to redo this whole slide. It's from a previous video. You can pause and read if you want to. But here's the structure in Baalbek, the apparently interrupted quarry work or unfinished quarry work. So here's another. I think this is Aswan in Egypt and complete with tool marks and all kinds of historical indications and all that. This is at Petra, I believe, with these divots here. Uh, this is somewhere in Egypt, I think. This is definitely in Egypt somewhere. And, okay, so the idea with all these little features like this and like these little holes here is that they are dummy features or silly, nearly sensical, but ultimately nonsensical features, which were not actual byproducts of any type of construction or creation of these structures. So the main takeaway here is that this would be a staged scene, as is this, quite likely, and the scale combined with the aesthetics and apparent methods used to create these, it's all a contradictory story with implications which don't add up to a coherent explanation. So let's explore this guy. And I'm going to present the argument that these little square holes here, they're basically these, just a tweaked out version of the same thing. So these are nonsensical pseudo features. They're almost features, but they were never functional. They're not byproducts of construction or anything. This is not saw blade marks, although it looks like it is. It's just a staged construction work. Okay, so here's the rear end of that big block in Baalbek, and here's one of these squares. And we also notice this seam. There's several thin very flat seams in the rock, which may be natural, but uh, we see similar stuff in Idaho and other places that are allegedly natural, but there's like a halfway artificial, halfway natural look to them, and this seam uh, shows up quite a bit in those structures. Uh, but I'll leave that for the moment to uh, focus on this hole. So let's zoom in here. And we see just kind of a rough hole, and it's kind of mysterious. We might suppose that it was used, like you insert a rod in there to break up the stone or to lift it or something like that. Some type of byproduct of a mining technique or excavation technique, or even modern archaeologists coming and taking samples at some point. But I'm making the case that it's none of those. It's just a s calling card or a deliberate nonsense feature, and it's a very common motif in these sites all around the world. So here again we have this thin seam, or possible breakage here, another thin horizontal seam there, not perfectly flat, but whatever. And these tool marks I'm saying are basically fake, and same thing here, here's another square hole, and there's half a dozen of these things all over this block and they are key components or key clues, in my opinion, rather than something to be ignored. So let's take a look at a whole bunch of sites with these similar square holes. Here's Baalbek again, same general area, and this is one of, presumably, what one of those big excavated blocks would have been used to build, you know, a big portion of wall. And I'm saying this whole site is a big, nothing burger or a pseudo site or a paper mache kit or theatrical prop if you will and here we see all these square holes 
very haphazardly placed and not amounting to much. And we see the variation in the shape. Some of them are round, some of them are kind of oblong, and the placement is kind of erratic. And then not to mention the contour of the block itself. It's very inconsistent and messy. So this uh, recessed area here and this protruding further area out here, there's like a very messy transition between the two. And you see that here as well, like this. And I'm going to say that's just a phony damage pattern. It's created that way. It's just a awkward flow of strange patterns in the rock. So I could spend an hour on this image, just all the subtle variations and inconsistencies in the center protruding portions, or as it's called, a channeled ashlar. That's the technical name for this, apparently. And we have like indications of a double channel. We have single channels. We have some channels which are shallower in one part of it, and then another portion of the block, it's deeper. We have all kinds of inconsistencies with the strange remainder of the wall over here, or the rest of the wall. And then all these square holes are calling cards and or nonsensical garnish or rich little finishing touches to give the, the whole structure a certain feel and make it have a certain effect and induce a certain narrative or paint a certain narrative. So that was Baalbek in Lebanon and this is the Amman Citadel in Jordan. And what do we have? We have this bricked up or closed up archway with this square hole there. So we could try to come up with explanations like it was used to mount something, like something was mounted using this hole or any number of things, but I'm saying it's just a phony little jerk off or a silly wonky feature. And possibly same thing right here I'm just noticing, like a kind of a goofy cavity there. And also the bricked up nature of the doorways I could spend a whole hour just showing image after image of these bricked up or closed up, sealed off doorways. So it's like an archway which was built for no reason, or it's, in my opinion, a false presentation of multiple stages of construction, or just a weird hodgepodgey mixture between a damage aesthetic, you know, the idea of build damage and rebuild. So these phases of construction and destruction and reconstruction. So this is possibly a false indication of that type of scenario. And then it may also just be a weird average between feature types or feature motifs. Like you can imagine a computer kind of almost randomly combining features together. Um, and not randomly in my opinion, but somewhat randomly, just at least derpily or strangely uh, selecting weird features that don't go together, like the square hole and the bricked up or closed off archway, which is non-functional. So go look at Europe or basically anywhere Roman or Greek or anything and you'll see all these pseudo doors. Even like halfway up a wall you'll see an arch which is just an arch in the middle of the wall with more wall in the middle of it. So it's in my opinion a, a dummy feature so there's this one in Egypt, 
It's the bent pyramid, apparently. And it's got this, which may be like the end of a shaft. However, the shafts themselves, I'm saying, are just dummy features as well. They were never functional, in my opinion. And take a look at how it kind of digs into this top of this bottom block here just a little bit. Just enough to, like, be irksome and annoying. <laughs> and then we have this kind of zigzaggy edge here, which doesn't seem like a legitimate damage pattern or cut pattern. It's just kind of strange and almost arbitrary. And then this one I love. It's at the Acropolis of Athens in Greece. And if you look at this statue here, you've got this square hole instead of a shoulder. So this is like the epitome of derpy, strange choices or questionable artistic choice in the event of a legitimate structure. But in my opinion, this whole structure and the whole site even the whole culture of Greece is not a legitimate feature of our history. It's an implant. It's a false theatrical prop or little backdrop or set piece in the play, which is human civilization. And then stuff like this is just like a uh, I told you so, or it's thrown in there for discoverability you know, to make the mischief discoverable. And if you think about it, if you try to make sense of it, how much sense does it make to have a square hole there? Like these ones have legitimate arms. Let's look at this in full resolution. And these ones have more or less legitimate arms. And this one just has a square hole. So it's like there never was an arm here. So this, like this crease here, it's looking like a deliberate mark, and it seems to continue there, perhaps. So it's features like these, which are little giveaways that this feature is a final representation of this form, rather than something which came later. So this little crease across demonstrates premeditation for this general area, in my opinion. And I would even go further and say, like, this damage pattern on the arm, and this damage pattern as well, here as well. I would say these statues or sculptures or whatever you want to call them, these were created without arms. So they were created with damaged arms already. And then there's also some restoration to be considered, like modern edits, and there's a whole ongoing process of revamping and re-derpifying the already derpy structures. So this could even be done by the restoration effort, which is more like a besmirching than a actual restoration. So it could be that these at some point were more legitimate looking and then the quote restoration process or some type of smearing process made them derpy at some point, even possibly on a long-term ongoing basis. So making little derpy tweaks one bit at a time so that they slowly morph into little idiotic, nonsensical features with messy arms and silly little details. And then I'm going to say like the structure itself, all this, all this is basically more nonsense although that's a longer discussion, I just want to focus on the holes right now. So let's look at another place with a goofy hole like this, which doesn't make much sense in context. So here we are in Egypt at the Luxor Temple, and we have this nose here, which is a square hole. <laughs> so how did that get there? Like what, this was used to mount the nose? I mean... I guess. Would they really need a separate piece for the nose? I don't think so. So nose damage and apparent defacing of these structures is all part of this protocol I'm talking about. It's it's a very strategic derpification, assuming that the structures were even legitimate in the first place. And I think it's actually more likely that the whole structure was brought into being already derpy and half damaged. So this is its original form, more or less. 
and then some minor repairs since then. And then we could also take a look at the square holes on the walls and stuff. And then hieroglyphs is obviously a big discussion. But in Greece, we have the square hole on the arm. Uh, Egypt there. And then Egypt again, the square hole for the nose, which I think is pretty damning. And again, in the Bingling Thousand Buddha Caves in China, first of all, the scale and general look of this whole site is questionable to begin with. It's basically a big self-contradictory nothing burger, in my opinion, like Stonehenge or any of those sites, and uh, the pyramids as well. And these square holes, <laughs> they're just randomly distributed across the whole rock face. So either these were planted later as part of a besmirchment, but then you see the derpy, childish, poorly drawn aesthetic or artistic style of the statue itself, not to mention the scale of it. And then also on the nose, we have more square holes here, just interesting coincidence. And then all these holes as well. So the basic idea is wherever you see these little square holes, the site itself is pretty much bogus. It's not anything you read in the history, or at least 80% of it may be just fabricated. <laughs> Unless you can think of a better explanation for how these square holes got here, what they were used to mount stuff, mm, I don't know. And then the messy way that the stone was excavated, it's, it's all, it all presupposes contradictory or self inconsistent motivations and techniques. So Pompeii in Italy, we have, we could consider these square holes here if we wanted to, or the messy nature of the walls, but I, I'd like to focus on the square aspect, square hole aspect of these metal statue things. So here's the back of this guy. He's got one on his back. It's like a little square portrait. And then here we see a close up, another little square portrait here in his leg. And I believe many of these are modern, either reconstructions or like artists' interpretations. Uh, so if they're modern, I would say that's part of the ongoing rewriting of the site and pulling the rug out from under whatever actual history is there and replacing it with some phony details. So we notice the missing arm and like it's a metal structure. So the missing arm is obviously premeditated, but then of course, if it's a modern work, it may just be a tribute to all the statues with missing arms. So that could be, but the square little portrait thing is kind of a derpy arbitrary feature. And we see multiple pieces with that arbitrary rectangle feature on them, like this one. There's that on the face, and then this right here. And then this one has only half a head, which is interesting. And then it has a nice little portrait there on the chest. It's just kind of an arbitrary little geometrical motif. And then it looks almost like a breast or an areola for a shoulder socket. And it may just be the armor or a cape wrapping around, possibly, but then we have this, which is like a female torso, just poking or protruding out of his torso. So yeah, you could say it's just abstract art or whatever, but I think it's more of a truth drop or a I told you so or a calling card type of thing. It's just telling you how derpy everything is within the derp. And then of course, these rectangular holes potentially related Okay, so there's this big arch thing with some type of tire or donut shaped round thing sticking out here. Uh, a little bit of column possibly sticking out here and here. Just a big round feature there. And then another look here. The round thing and something sticking out there. Possible another round thing here. And then all the square holes, all these little holes. I don't think these are like from combat or 
legitimate damage patterns necessarily. I think these are just more derp or somewhat arbitrary finishing touches, like icing on the cake type of deal. And then I could talk about the brickwork and the shoddy, strange construction work and apparent damage patterns and all that, but I think I'll skip that for today. One thing I would point out is see how this structure is like perfectly flat there and then there's one brick protruding above that level. So why would there be one brick remaining on a level above this? So either this was the original level and they decided to put one more brick on top or this was the original level of it and all these, this layer of bricks right here, this missing layer, that somehow broke away in such a neat pattern as to leave this level perfectly flat. So it's kind of a subtle argument, but um, if you run through all the scenarios in your head of how you would end up with a nice neat flat layer there and then one single protruding brick on the edge there, none of them really make all that much sense. And again, take a look at the brickwork, see if that makes as much sense as we would like it to. So let's jump to Petra, still on the topic of the square holes, and not to mention this phony column, but this square hole here, it's just laughably kind of placed there as a, a little joke, or it's, it's pretty over the top. Once you see it, it's very over the top and in your face, and I would even say whimsical and kind of funny and playful, the placement of these square holes and silly features possible round hole. It's not necessarily square. That's just one variation. It's not always square. Sometimes it's rectangular or a big stripe or circular holes or a protruding bit rather than the holes. And then these tool marks as well are fake in my opinion. And then here's a underground water well in Petra and we see another square hole here and all these tool marks. I would even question the striations in the bedrock, whether those are genuine, like you have a perfectly straight flat line there, and then it's like the natural streaks of the rock are kind of uninterrupted by that perfectly flat ribbon there. And there is such a thing as like cross bedding or cross mineralization in geology, so it could be, but this nice straight line, another one here and kind of there, these all may be weird little artificial hiccups. And so we've got the square hole here and more Petra, this square hole. We could highlight these little holes as well. One, two, three, four, etc. cetera. Uh, right here, right here. So those are all part of it in my opinion as well. Even this potentially, even this layering Certainly the weird T-shape of this door is strategic derp or gibberish, which is almost something, but not quite anything. And then this hole I'm saying is basically used as a calling card, whether intentionally or not. I think it pretty much must be, but uh, these holes, these little holes were never functional and this square hole in my opinion was never functional. So, Okay, one more here, a uh, different area, but same type of feature. This one with the little holes next to it. So again, the co-occurrence of these features sometimes is used as a way to link them. So the premeditated positioning of the circular holes next to this square hole, that tells you that it's kind of one idea or part of the same little project. So we go back an image and even though these ones are over here, they're, I think, associated with this one. Like, if we only looked at this image, we might suppose that these are different, but then in this image, since they're right next to each other, we figure they must be associated. I, I, I mean, even as I say that, I'm not super thrilled by the argument, but I don't know, just consider it. And then we have this little nonsense nublet here inside a hole, very silly. 
even this deep groove here is potentially a phony feature and all the tool marks of course but okay so in Petra we have this square hole this one nearly identical and then let's go over to China what do we have boom this is way up in the mountains in China the immortal bridge as it's called on Mount Tai and we have this feature of the rocks which I'll discuss in a moment this bridge where it gets its name from but the interesting thing in this image that I'd like to point out is this square hole so let's zoom in there and check this out it's basically the same thing as in Petra right so it's just an arbitrary square hole right so I would encourage you to maybe pause and try and come up with 10 reasons why this is a legitimate feature and see if you can't debunk those reasons or see if you can come up with one good one even first of all it's a, kind of a lot of work to carve something this cleanly and if it's like ancient civilizations with lost high technology or whatever like what purpose would this serve they just needed to take a chunk out of the rock I mean maybe but it's not a window it's it's a nearly this nearly that weird feature which isn't really a feature so China Petra just quick a B of these keep your eyes on the rectangles and it's basically the same thing so whoever did Petra also did this immortal bridge in Mount Tai China so this is architectural dir in my opinion it's just strange arbitrary artificial patterns and again the co-occurrence of some of these geometrical motifs or pairing them right next to each other is a way of linking them or catch and throw or outing itself or playfully giving clues so this is right next to this bridge so this bridge is apparently natural that's the explanation for it so let's zoom in and look at the bridge itself so this is a natural crumbling of rock which just happened to wedge in a particular way that's the explanation however if you look closely at the rocks they appear to be fitted to one another and that could be from erosion like they slowly begin to fit to one another over tens of thousands of years or whatever of erosion water erosion wind erosion etc but there's a kind of look to them where they're almost fitted together like megalithic blocks not so much right here but like right here it's kind of a corner almost and right here there's like a fin of this one which extends down and reaches down onto this lower block here so these are like 85 percent natural looking and 15 percent megalithic looking so again this is like a clue in my opinion that this structure is not natural so this is a clue that this is not natural and then we might say that this is a clue that the landscape and even the rock itself is a fabrication as well it's like a continuous string of breadcrumbs from one level of scale to the next almost or at least I'm interpreting it that way like this is a real small scale thing but it says things about this it has certain implications or at least raises certain questions and then this if we really give it a good going over it raises certain questions about okay well what about these creases in the rock you know what I mean what about some of these surrounding rocks how natural are they and that may be taking it too far I admit that but it may not be so time will tell I think and let's look at one more image of this square hole here we get a slightly different angle of these rocks here and just another look at this arbitrary square all right and then one more look here the square is not in the frame but even like this groove here may be some arbitrary thing and then we get a nice look at the almost fitted nature like see how this edge is almost like a flat face of a megalithic block or at least slightly reminiscent of that so this is probably not a natural feature in my opinion it's like a Disneyland attraction like Tom Sawyer land or like the Old West or 
or whatever, you know. Okay, and I know I've covered this place a lot already, but Ravenous Palace. This is basically architectural dir. It's a big hodgepodge of silly and strangely combined features. So these big feet here are just for confusion purposes or to create a big mystery, something like that. And the combination of the brickwork with the deep grooves and the different techniques. And why does this wall kind of end here? And why are these feet so big? And why are these steps more megalithic looking than these steps? And Or maybe it's just, you can't see those, but there's the different styles, different construction styles. We might even suppose that these are like actual petrified dragon feet or something, or at least that's one line of inquiry that we could get sucked into. But And then up on top, I don't have any images in this presentation, but there's a whole bunch of weird stuff up on top that I won't even get into, but there's the square holes on the side of this structure. There's variations on the square hole, like little rectangular holes, longer holes, diagonal holes, or just indentations if you prefer, and long grooves, which are just another variation. We've got the ones that change direction. We've got angled ones, rows of them, changes of trajectory, and then wonky angles and partial features and little hiccups in the geometry, wandering trajectories and paths, very somewhat organized, but still very disheveled looking or disordered and chaotic almost. And then the square holes, which are again, a calling card or telling you that the structure is bogus and non-functional. It's just patterns basically. Good look at it there. And then same thing here. So let's AB this real quick in Saihuite, Peru. And then this is Sigiriya in Sri Lanka. So check out these square holes, the silly grooves. It's a slightly different aesthetic, but it's the same general idea. So these places are never in an identical style, but they utilize similar motifs and geometrical themes. So we've got little hiccups in the flow of the patterns and little silly almost natural holes and we've got these holes right here with this little divot at the bottom and this groove which looks like it may have been functional but isn't or wasn't in actuality we've got this silly little nublet here we've got these uh, it's actually broken if you see it from another angle it's just the thing broken half kind of naturally or whatever I think recently actually, but uh, we've got these windy stairs. We've got stairs on the side of it. So it's a big nothing burger, a big silly hodgepodge of features. And some of those features are square holes and those square holes are seen in Greece, Egypt, Petra, you name it really. China, as we saw in Mount Tai. And here's one more at Saihuite in Peru. Just a kind of a nothing burger, a silly, false construction and right down to the indentations and some of the damage patterns almost wobbly that's all strategic or calculated at least in my opinion this weird little alcove thing and then of course the square hole this one is a through hole that goes all the way through then this little set of stairs here and little miniature sets of stairs are another motif I'll touch on in a moment so just keep that in mind. So let's go one image back and we see this little set of derpy stairs, not to mention this, if it was a bench, it's got like, okay, maybe it's just two rows of seats or whatever, but I don't think this is a bench. It's just a, it's like 40% bench. <laughs> and then this, whoops, this little set of stairs right here is another variation on this little thing and also this. So it's a geometrical motif that's repeated over and over the little silly set of stairs. And we see that again everywhere, pretty much all across the world. And right here, I just wrote, say what? There's some interesting things going on with language to say the least, <laughs> like, I mean, maybe it's coincidence, but I just think it's funny that it's called Saihuite. And then it's got some of the most bizarre patterns. And if you take some 
liberty with the pronunciation of this word. You could say it's like say what? <laughs> I just think it's funny. Okay, so keep these little staircases in mind, and of course the square holes. And incidentally, the opposite side of the same block has yet another silly staircase, and then on the back side we have another one of those square holes which looks nearly identical to the one in China and Petra. This one's got the square hole and staircase. And then in Vitcos, Peru, somewhere near Cusco, there's these square protrusions now. Basically the same type of deal as the square hole, just kind of a nonsense feature or suggestive but ultimately gibberish feature and then we've got this stripe or groove right here which kind of fades in and fades out or at least fades out right here and these miscellaneously placed things like the arrangement of these and the wandering meandering edge of this it's not even straight in the first place so that's a derpy detail so this was never a legitimate structure. It's not an eroded or weathered former structure. Rather, it's a premeditated pile of gobbledygook. Unless there's also the chance that this may have been a much different looking portion of a legitimate structure, which was subsequently given all these derpy alterations. That's somewhat likely as well, I would say. However, the final state that we're looking at does bear signs of deliberate gibberish, in my opinion. Okay, so what else do we have with this image? We have the miniature staircase again. So let's dive into this phenomena a little bit. Even this is a little variation on that, I would say. Just a little hiccup in the motif. And... So these nice little cut marks. So this was never a legitimate staircase. You can tell by the varying lengths of these steps. And this one's even not even level, it looks like, almost. So let's move over to the Sun Temple at Olantetambo, Peru. And we see the stair pattern there as well. So it's a different site, possibly the same culture if you grant that it was some type of legitimate culture that created this but uh, here's the general look of it the up and down is another little variation on it like the I don't know you may have seen in like rugs and stuff this is a commonly woven pattern for artistic purposes or whatever I mean the knobs we'll talk about in a minute these meaty <laughs> silly nonsensical knobs which are not byproducts of any type of advanced construction. It's just they're thrown in there to confuse or even for jest. Uh, I would say it's multi-purpose kind of, or it straddles multiple purposes. Here we have an arbitrary stepping up here. And so any basically any surface detail that you see in this image is deliberate gibberish. So these scoop marks, the protrusions, like the ridge here, any little angles and stuff, those are all faux details, F-A-U-X, or phony details, just applied to make an interesting nothing burger, <laughs> a false sight, a bogus sight. So, and then, while they may serve multiple purposes, these features are all clues that the entire site of Olante Tambo is bogus, in my opinion. So let's focus on the stairs aspect and let's observe the same thing in Petra and Egypt. So here we are in Petra and we've got that up and down stairs motif and we could say it's a coincidence or we could try to say it's a oh, lost civilization or something. Not likely in my opinion. I think it's just pattern soup more or less or repeated geometrical patterns or a catch and throw of clues perhaps. And we see that motif repeated all throughout Petra, or pretty commonly, not to mention these phony facades which are completely non-functional. And we've got many variations. We've got protruding steps, we've got, or like a 
standalone steps almost. We've got kind of protruding ones. And then one more area here. These are more at ground level. And we see just a set of stairs. Just kind of a silly pattern. Zoom in a bit here. So these were not functional stairs, in my opinion. They're moderately artistic, but they're just kind of silly gibberish. So keep this in mind, and then let's go to Abu Sir in Egypt. And what do we observe on the walls? Kind of a relief or a carved pattern, which is basically identical. So we've got this pattern here, and in the video he does it like a left-right pan. So I just took a screenshot and there's like one half of it here and the other direction facing over here. So again, the idea of catch and throw of clues, like still maybe a stretch, but I think even the rough nature of the stone here, like the smoother nature here and then the rougher nature here, I think that's all little calculated variations as well. And then we don't see the whole thing, but we get a fairly decent look at whatever this is. And in my opinion, just a motif of architectural dir or geometrical silliness, which gets repeated across these sites as part of a giant united set of false ruins or false historical sites. So Timuanaku in Bolivia, again, the little cute little staircases and what these are functional for irrigation or agricultural purposes. I don't think so. Of course, the square holes and this little recessed area. Okay, maybe used to hold water or whatever. Uh, one more look, different angle here, and these cute little staircases here. So I think this is a truth drop or a clue. And then let's take a look at some larger scale versions of the same thing. This is somewhere in the Pontine Islands in Italy. Not sure which island, but we've got a similar little carved out little pool area, and then possible what could be perceived as little sets of steps, or at least somewhat suggestive of that. So this is a bogus site as well. It's not quarrying, it's not mining, it's not creating a pool for recreational purposes or anything for boating or maritime commercial activity or anything like that. It's not even Roman, I would say. It's just a fake historical site, and that raises many questions, obviously, but this is yet another motif, the somewhat rectangular cavity with the little staircase as one component of it. And so that's this is possible circumstantial evidence that there's geometrical motifs being passed around in the architecture. And then here in the Phrygian Valley in Turkey, we have basically a very similar thing, a kind of rectangular cavity here, a shallow little pool, if you will, and then a nice little set of stairs. Uh, very messy and uneven nonetheless. And these, the edge of it just kind of meandering and poorly executed, and not to mention the entire fields of other strange patterns here. Here's a closer look at that. This silly staircase here and yep just a little geometrical motif or hiccup possibly even just for amusement purposes but likely for bewilderment purposes and then these grooves here which are suggestive of some type of construction or harvesting of the land in some capacity but i think that suggestion is fallacious Again, these grooves are basically just variations on the indentations and phony holes and stuff. So a couple more looks here. Again, like a rectangular kind of square shallow pool type thing here. And then some nice little grooves and stuff. This one doesn't really have a staircase. And then some holes here. A lot of interesting features in the nearby area or surrounding area. But the, in this general area, the Phrygian Valley, there's a whole bunch of features like this. These, what we might suspect are 
harvested little rectangles of land with some type of device going back and forth, uh, doing some type of purposeful activity. But in my opinion, that indication of purposefulness is not genuine. And then one more area here, just a little set of steps. Could be perceived as functional, certainly. However, not in my opinion, in light of some of the other stuff we've seen. Okay, let's move on. So back to Tiwanaku, and let's discuss these blocks a little bit, just the general vibe of Tiwanaku in Bolivia. So this image would be the epitome of architectural dir, in my opinion. It's basically just suggestive patterns which are ultimately non-functional. So we've got holes, oh is it a drill hole, blah blah blah. Rectangular holes, this little curve here, these nested rectangular recesses, these again nested cutout patterns or excavated little interiors of these blocks and they almost look like they might fit together in some type of functional construction like they may be blocks left over from a obliterated structure or something but I would say that's a phony suggestion. Here's a good look at one of the blocks. A nice little pie-shaped door, kind of a T-shape, and it's very mysterious, but ultimately just geometrical variations. We've got this hole here, this hole here, uh, this rectangular cavity there, and these recesses and all that. And so my contention, or the point I'm making, is this was never part of a legitimate gate or structure or anything. It's just phony ruins. And you already know that I think that by this point, because I've said it 12 billion times. Okay, so here's a half-decent look at eight or nine examples here. Just the nested and arbitrary patterns. We've got the nice little stairs. A little honeycomb, all non-functional. See, doesn't this look like it's a vase or something? That's just geometrical variation. And again, all very calculated, very strategic. These little angles and all very rich and mysterious, looking like it adds up to a very interesting story when in fact it kind of doesn't. These curves here are just hiccups per the algorithm. These looking like they could have been used for mounting brackets or something, or you know, a cross beam or something. This hole right here, just a hiccup, somewhat arbitrary. So let's shift our focus a little bit to knobs. So you've probably seen on all these sites, they have these knobs in many manifestations and shapes and orientations and sizes kind of haphazardly placed in some areas or somewhat regularly placed in other blocks and it's architectural dir in my opinion not to mention the whole polygonal masonry aspect of it uh, the pillowy look to it that's all rich variation just to deepen the mystery and then the knobs themselves are silly false details so I don't know how much I need to dwell on that. I've already explained my take on it, but these are not byproducts of some advanced construction method like melting the stone and then extruding it or whatever, or, you know, softening it with sound or whatever these theories are. I'm not saying it wasn't softened with sound, but I am saying that the appearance of the knobs is not a byproduct of that process. Rather, the occurrence of the knobs is done for deceptive purposes. These are thrown into the mix. So more knobs, this on a much larger scale at the Yangshan Quarry in China, or quarry as it's called, but I don't think it's a quarry. Even like the surrounding rock, like you look at all this and this groove here and all this stuff, I think this rock is all phony prop, more or less. And how much of the surrounding landscape, I couldn't tell you, but I can say with decent level of confidence that at least this area and this and this surrounding rocky area is all contrived 
and whipped up into the current configuration that we observe it. So we see the wonky edges and meandering features, the haphazardly placed knobs, which are moderately suggestive of some type of function, but ultimately functionless, just derpy patterns. And yeah, it's the epitome of architectural dir again, just a fake nothing burger or a goof muffin or feature salad. And one more look at the Sun Temple in Peru and just focusing on the knobs this time again these rails and knobs in the various shapes yeah they're all very mysterious and enticing but they're just gibberish features so let's look at a few more examples at this site one more angle here we've got a nice knob on the side and then these little knobs on these little stripes or intermediate stripes of block. This one with a nice little angle there just for the heck of it. Again, all these little hiccups to add to the mystery and or be whimsical. Good look at these steps here or stairs pattern and then this knob here. Even like this little thing, it's not to be ignored. So here, this rail looking almost like it's functional, this rail here looking much more precise, or at least somewhat precise, then here we have these ones which are, they tell a different story. They're much more wonky and sloppily executed, whereas this one is more precise. And that heterogeneity, or occurrence of precision alongside messiness or imprecision, that's all calculated and strategic. So here we have very tightly fitting ones, tightly fitting blocks, and we also have very loosely fitting blocks. And I would say that's all part of the strategy. So these are just variations on the geometrical motif of a knob. And they're not any of the things we have suspected they are. They're not left over from the construction of the block. They're not used to raise the block or anything. They're just silly gibberish. Okay, so here's like a little bench thing, basically a plumbus. If you've watched my Is History a Plumbus video. Um, so these knobs non-functional, this whole non-functional or indentation here, and then kind of too shallow to sit almost, like not quite wide enough, or maybe it is, I don't know, but it's like 70% bench and 30% gibberish. And then I would also present the case that these blocks which are strewn about are not former components of a actual structure. Rather, they are just plopped here as a phony indication of some structure or fake damage or a theatrical prop representation of some type of remains or ruins of an advanced structure or advanced civilization, but that's all a fake setup, just a phony set of props. So like, see how this rail here is all derpy and it meanders and the edges of these blocks, some of them are precise, some of them, like this block, its edge is like very uneven. This block, it's very precise. And these knobs here, these wide rectangular nubs or knobs those are all just variations on the derp and also these indentations on the edges of these blocks these are not damage they're not even very suggestive of damage they're almost blatant phony features and it's a wonder we didn't pick up on it too much sooner so like these are just little arbitrary scoops Here's a good look at one. And then another one in the background there. And yeah, just derp salad in a very particular aesthetic, kind of to uh, scramble our brains, possibly. That, this, this, all 
just basically the same type of phenomenon as the square hole we were looking at earlier. Just a slightly different variation. Not actual damage patterns. Even this, that may not be a legitimate damage pattern on this corner. And like this groove here that may be contrived. Okay. And then the whole side itself. And I'm gonna say even the less impressive walls like this and the remains of more recent cultures, that may all be staged as well. So these remains of walls and indications of multiple eras, like we've got this layer, we've got this one on top, and then it looks like another layer of construction here, and another layer right there perhaps. So those may all be feigned or pretend or mimicked. Then we've got all these blocks strewn about. Again, the fake little divots here, not actual damage, just these silly grooves in odd configurations. And what is it? What is it? It's a big nothing show, a big set of nonsensical props <laughs> that, uh, that begs you to figure it out. But since it doesn't add up to an actual history, you'll never figure it out. That's the idea behind it, kind of. Okay, so all these socket-like cavities almost, again, often suggestive that they may have come from an actual structure, but they did not, in my opinion. Even these like little silly phony window things, these are just like arbitrary cavities. It's like the same geometrical theme or motif as the square hole, just applied to a different type of wall. It's like square holes that are suggestive of doors or windows, but they're not really anything. And what else? Good look at this block here. These scoop marks, again, just another variation on holes or silly derp. These grooves, all just tweaked out parameters, basically. And then we will end with this guy. It's got the little steppy pattern. It's got these silly nonsensical indentations, the knobs. It's very suggestive. It's got a lot of precision. And then, I don't know, maybe if we look closely, we could find some lack of precision as well. Or meandering edges. Possibly, I don't really see any right off the bat. But it's, again, basically a silly phony ruin, a big interesting nothing show. Okay, I think I've said as much as I want to say for this video. I have some more architectural stuff I want to cover, so I will talk about that in the next video. Alright, see you later.